Ultra HDMI kits from Retroactive often include an extra cable that's marked as bad, which the installation guide says to ignore and discard, not to use it. But the problem with this one looked relatively easy to fix, so I thought why not salvage it since enough people have ruined their cables and could use a replacement. So it looks like it's just a gap in the trace that's used for reading controller input to bring up the in-game menu or do in-game reset, which should just take a little jumper. All right, it's hard to tell from this angle on the microscope, but I did expose a lot of shiny trace underneath, copper trace, and I'll use the fiberglass pin to make sure that it's cleaned. Took some stranded wire and twisted it up, dipped it in flux, and this is gonna be our jumper. Now I'm tanning it. And I still need to tin the trace on the FFC the flex PCB. Let's add a little flux. This is MG Chemicals liquid rosin flux. And, well, hold on. I think my dispenser, needle dispenser tip is jammed. When that happens, I usually just clear it up with a little heat. It should be flowing now. There it goes. Uh, only on one side, I'll have to spread it with my jumper wire. There we go. I guess now it's, my jumper wire is double fluxed. Since I got the gel flux and this liquid flux on it. Right, time to tin the trace. Grab my iron. Got it around 300 degrees. Since it's a flex PCB, it can't take much heat, very thin traces. So when soldering on something this thin, you're applying almost as much heat to whatever's underneath it, and you have to make sure it's not something that's gonna melt. I'm using a ceramic drink coaster that works perfect for this, and so I keep a stack of them here on the workbench. So now it's nicely tinned and just waiting for our jumper. Let me grab that. Dip it in this nasty looking gel flux. Yeah, that's the same tub of gel flux that I've had since I was a kid in the 90s. <laughs> and, uh, I guess it just doesn't take much. So that one tub just keeps going and going. Looks nastier and nastier, but keeps working. I uh, try to get this lined up here. It would probably be a lot easier if I weren't trying to work under this microscope. I just wanted something to show you guys. 
So hopefully it's worth it. So let's get some heat on there. Ah, not straight. But the surface tension should be keeping them connected and then I'll just reflow and adjust. There we go. Let me cut off the excess here. If I can find my cutters. Here they are. Oh, you know what? It might have been easier to break it off as short as possible if I had left that connected. Because then I'd just be able to wiggle the whole wire back and forth instead of this little tip that I can't really get my fingernail onto. Yeah, I'll make it work. There we go. I'll clean up some of this flux so I don't get my finger all sticky. And ah, well, that'll help. Now I know where to hold it. Sorry about my cruddy fingernails. Yeah, this, the tip of this is bent just the wrong way. It's already feeling really loose, but not coming off yet. If I had my tweezers handy, I could probably just snatch it right off, but feels like it's ready to go up, fall off anyway. God, why is it still on there? <laughs> this is getting ridiculous. Should be long gone. All right, I'm just gonna hold it. There we go. Okay, we might be done. Just need to clean and test it. And uh, originally I had tested from that square pad on the left all the way to pin one on the other end, which I can't get both in the frame here. But, oh, by the way, that's not just a test point over there. It's also a via where the trace was double-sided. But of course, it's single-sided at the place where the break occurred. So I set my meter to continuity. Or I should get a beep if the connection's been restored. Let's see... Okay, I'm touching the other end, you can't see, and I am getting a beep. All right, I consider that fixed. Well, let me test the other connections. Okay, well, it works. So since this is a salvage cable, I'll end up using it to salvage someone else's failed installation, which I've had to do a few times now, and failed installations usually result in ruined cables, and the kits only come with one good cable, typically. <laughs> and uh, So getting another one is sometimes a problem. And, well, now we have one.